Exactly. That, that, at the very time when our Western technological culture is, uh, is responsible for mass destruction in the Amazon, which it is, and by the way, it's a problem that could be easily solved. We don't need to destroy the Amazon. We really don't need those soya bean farms in the Amazon to you know, feed cattle so that people can eat hamburgers. That's, we much more need the rainforest. Right. You know? So at the very time that the Amazon is under threat from the Western way of life, which has infected almost every culture on the planet, at that very time the Amazon is sending out its emissary in the form of the vine of souls who is kind of extending her coiled sinuous self all around the world and reaching into human consciousness everywhere uh, because ayahuasca is being drunk all around the it's world everywhere now. I know I, I know so I have a I've met someone on Facebook who who takes it regularly There's that's a, a cop no that's a way. cop and you're going to jail. No, that's no, that's no <laughs> cop. He knits like, sh what are they called? The Shibobo or so there's a name. The Shibibo, yeah. Shibibo, he knits these patterns. Like, he like, he showed, they're like, they knit the, the, the exact things you were saying that are on the cave walls, like the honeycomb yeah. patterns they and do, stuff. Yeah. So they like create these yeah. beautiful quilts. Is it quilts? They, they do, make? yes, yes. That are just incredible depictions of the, what apparently the ayahuasca. Ayahuasca visions, yeah. yeah. Of you, the geometric aspect of that. Do you ever think of how much you play a part of that does that ever focus in on your mind I mean your instincts obviously were to produce this book and to talk about it very openly and honestly and to do interviews like this and you know have discussions like this where you talk about it and you know this right now is gonna reach half a million people right. and they're gonna consider what you're saying and they're gonna look into it and they're gonna like go whoa mm -hmm. do you really think that there's some fucking vine that you can take from the jungle that allows you to communicate with the spirit world I you feel some, you find I feel out some responsibility vine, in this area Let's um, explain to people what it does for, for, for noobs, for people yeah, who are not aware yeah, what well, ayahuasca and, is. And the first thing I'd like to say is that, uh, that ayahuasca, and as a matter of fact all psychedelics, are very serious business. Um, I, I, I personally do not believe that psychedelics are appropriate for recreational activity. I think if somebody chooses to do that, that's their body, that's their choice, but I don't think it's the right thing to do. We need to treat these um, amazing substances with respect. Um, and it's anybody who's worked with psychedelics will know absolutely that the set and setting in which the psychedelic is consumed is as important as the psychedelic itself. Absolutely. Where, what you've prepared, where, what you are looking for from the experience and the company in which you take it and the reason for which you take it are definitely going to color and affect the experience. And um, I, think it's a, I think it's a mistake to use these powerful agents of, of consciousness work um, for recreation. There are other great things for recreation and, 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 and other great sensual subjects, substances, but, but uh, the psychedelics are not for that purpose. And, and, and if somebody wants to have a really bad trip and have, and have truly horrific experiences with psychedelics, take it in the wrong set and setting and you can be pretty sure that's going to happen to you sooner or later. So I would first thing I would say to people with with all psychedelics is be careful. This is this respect. Is, uh, respect, respect, deep respect for this. This is uh, this is a very serious thing you're engaging on. Therefore, um, find a. Uh, Find, find a space that can be protected. Find um, somebody who knows what they're doing, who, who can sit with you and, and who can oversee the, see the ceremony. And bring a ceremony to the, to the table. Let's not just uh, uh, sit down disrespectfully, uh, disrespectfully and, and consume the substance. Let's, uh, let's bring a ceremonial aspect to it. And I would say with ayahuasca, I know that quite a number of people now have started to get the ingredients on the internet and brew up their ayahuasca. I honestly think that's a mistake. There are people who are enormously experienced working with ayahuasca. They are the shamans from the Amazon. More and more Westerners are being trained by those shamans. Those Westerners are returning to Western countries and are be creating a new form of shamanism relevant to the urban and industrial context of the, of, of the West. If you really want to work with ayahuasca, seek out somebody like that. Better still, if you, can, if you can get the funds together, go down to Brazil or go down to Peru and work with the masters. But, but How do you find the masters if you want to do that? Um, well, it's all word of mouth. There's a, there is a, a, a huge network. I'm, I'm often reminded of sort of underground sects at the end of the Roman Empire, like the Gnostics, you know, being persecuted by, the, by, by mainstream Christianity, where everything was done by word of mouth. It's like that with ayahuasca now. Um, generally speaking, if you feel drawn to the vine, do some serious research on the subject, and you will find your way to the, to the right people. There are some charlatans working in this field. There are in all fields. Um, but there are also some very good people. And, and do some serious research first and look into the subject and find the right person, somebody who's deeply experienced, who understands the vine 
and work with them and you can be sure you're going to have a much more worthwhile experience. Whatever series of events led you to go there and take those substances and have these visionary experiences mm. and then relay them, do you ever feel as if you were compelled, that you were brought to it, like this is, like uh, you, you have a purpose? Do you no. feel that way? Uh, no. Um, I, I, if so, uh, it's like the rest of the course of my life, a series of accidents, like I flew into that city in northern Ethiopia in 1983 and, and found myself in front of a monk who said he had the Ark of the Covenant behind him. It turned the direction of my life. And okay, I decided that after, after I published Underworld, which was my last book on the lost civilization issues, um, I had always been interested in human origins. And that's why I decided to write Supernatural. But when I got into the subject, I found that the story didn't get interesting until 50,000 years ago. And it got interesting because of psychedelics. And then, so it was an, an accident that led me to that. Then, well, obvious, the next research conclusion was that I had to go take some psychedelics and to do so in a shamanic uh, setting and learn about it. So I, I, it was a series of accidental decisions kind of led me, led me to that process. So I, I, I guess I don't feel called or chosen, but I, but, but I found myself in the hot seat. Do you feel obligated, though, because you know so much about it? I feel obligated. I feel, and I feel a responsibility, uh, which, is, which is, to, um, is to share with others that these, um, that these a agents can be transformational. And that, and that they can be incredibly helpful, uh, but that they are also extremely powerful and that they must be treated with respect. And, and they're real. Content. And here's, here's the thing. Everyone is running around looking for magic. Everyone is running around looking for a religious experience. Mm. You can have that. You really can. It is a real thing. Oh, it doesn't care real. whether you believe in it or yeah. don't believe in it. It's not dogmatic. It is a, a legit thing. Oh, yeah, and completely. if you take it, you'll have an experience that you cannot believe is real and available. Yeah. You cannot believe that it's so easy that you drink this substance and all of a sudden you, you literally enter into some different dimension. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's, it, it, it is real. Uh, and that's why the, it's really not a matter for intellectual speculation. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, 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 it's a direct experience that one yeah, can have. And then what you make of the experience is, is really what matters. It's all it's like you, the people who ridicule it. You're like, my, you know, when, when people mock mushrooms, like, I have even talked to Michio Kaku, who's this amazing physicist and this really yeah. brilliant guy. And I was on the Opie and Anthony show, and I asked him, have you ever done mushrooms? And he, he you know, s s said like I, was a f like I was a fool. He was acting like I was a fool, mm. like I was a silly person. No, I need my mind to be intact and all this stuff so uh, I can work uh, on and, physics. And since he's never done mushrooms, yeah. how can he know what it does to his mind? This, is, like, this is prejudice at work. I'm like, my God, man. You're, you, this, what if it was real? If it was real? Would you trust me? Would you, if, if, it, if I told you that there was some real thing and you take it and you're going to be in communication with some insanely wise entity from some parallel or constantly surrounding you dimension, would you just try, would you just try it? Are you yeah, convinced? See, that's, that's the problem that we're talking about here is because uh, the, Michio Kaku, he is a genius, but Super he's also genius. been conditioned. Mm -hmm. And so now imagine if a genius came in contact with something, because right yes. now this spirit, whatever you want to call it, it's right now the majority of a lot of the people it's contacting are like 16 year olds in trailers who are, who are like <laughs> playing Xbox. Yeah, you right. know, it's like I am trying to communicate yeah. high level information. Why yeah. are you sending me these well, idiot kids? <laughs> to, be, to be fair, I have to I have to say that that um, that uh, I'm not sure that's the case with ayahuasca. No, I think that's uh, uh, mushrooms. For, for quite though. a whole number of mushrooms reasons. For sure. Mushrooms for sure, but but it's not the case with ayahuasca. Yeah, it's too uh, difficult. For, yeah, I, ayahuasca is really a mission. I mean, you have to brace yourself. Uh, I, ayahuasca is hard work. Uh, ayahuasca will make you vomit. It will give you diarrhea. They call it the purge in the Amazon. And it is a, an enormously effective purgative agent, take my word for it. We still haven't explained <laughs> to the noobs, to people who really have no idea what we're talking about. Um, what, what ayahuasca is, is an orally active version of DMT, and that these amazing people from what, how, how far does it date back? How many thousands well, of years? There's proved archaeological evidence for the use of ayahuasca going back more than 4,000 years in the Amazon. And that so somehow or another 4,000 years ago, out of hundreds of thousands of different plants, right, they figured out how to combine the vine of one with the leaves of another. Yes. and. It's a sophisticated piece of uh, chemistry that they're yeah. doing. Yeah, explain to people what it okay. is. So the ay ayahuasca consists of three ingredients. One of them is water, the medium in which it's brewed, and the other two are a leaf, 
that leaf is from a plant called Cicotria viridis, is the botanical name. They call it Chacruna in the Amazon. And that leaf contains uh, pharmacologically pure dimethyltryptamine. It contains DMT. Which your own body makes. Which your own body makes. And uh, with that, uh, with DMT you have a problem because DMT is not orally active. And the reason that DMT is not orally active is that we have an enzyme in our stomachs called monoamine oxidase. And monoamine oxidase switches off DMT on contact. What they did in the Amazon jungle was that they found out of actually there's a, you're right there's 150,000 different species of plants and trees in the Amazon. Oh my God. They found the one other that contains a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. Jesus. That's what the vine contains. The vine actually does not contain the psychedelic ingredient. It contains the ingredient that allows the psychedelic to become orally active. So do you think they just ate the two of them at the same time once and had some crazy experience and went, well, whoa, I've write asked this down? about this, they all say the same thing. The spirits taught our ancestors to do this.